Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to the single player world. I hope you're doing very well today and staying safe, but today guys, the stone cutter is sewing right through my legs. Ouch, no, uh, today we are once again going to be doing some more work on the village. So let's head over there and real quick, I want to catch you up on what we did in a live stream. So if we just fly on over, you can see everything we did in the previous episode with the bridge, the marketplace and the big meeting hall. But if we just dive down into the water here, you can see everything that we did in the live stream because this place is looking much more green. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, but I didn't unfortunately get to finish it. All of the seagrass and the kelp and the sea pickles have been placed down but I want to add in some of these rock formations and boulders. Now I've marked out where all of them are going to go. You can see the cobblestone and the granite if I can just find a piece. Yeah there we go. Blends into the dirt quite well so might have trouble finding them again but I just want to go through the river and basically do a whole bunch more of this and we can call the river done and yeah looks a million times better than what it did before. So whilst I go through adding in the rest of the rock formations and boulders, I just want to talk to you guys real quick about a couple of things. First of all, shaders, as you can see, we've got them on. Last episode, I asked you guys how much you would like to see them incorporated into this series, and the majority was just every now and again for time lapses or cinematic stuff. So we won't be using them in first person, like throughout the whole of the video, but we will make use of them for stuff like this. And how cool do they look underwater, right? Makes the river look even better. Better, more than I thought it could but the other thing I want to mention the other thing that I asked you in the last episode uh, was if you like the idea of doing this village project as somewhat of a mini series and pretty much all the comments that were regarding it were on board. I didn't see any that were against the idea, so I think for the meantime, while I'm feeling inspired to work on our village here, this is going to be the sole focus. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing for the foreseeable future. Probably and every now and again, we'll stick an odd episode where we don't do anything with the village. Uh, but for the most part, this is what we're going to be working on. So hopefully it's not too overbearing with all of the villages going on, with Tectopia being my other series, and now this one is mainly village building but uh, I love it and I think you guys enjoy watching that sort of stuff too otherwise you probably wouldn't watch my videos as that's really <laughs> all I ever do. So we can now call this river finished and as you can see I've put up a couple of these rock protrusions prior to the entrances. I haven't gone too far down into the river otherwise I could just go on forever if I did that but yeah we've got a couple here just to look like it carries on throughout the rest of the river but uh, yeah it's honestly looking pretty magical down here. Whoa, let's not go straight into a rock but uh, let me just explain what these are. So I did uh, tell you what they are in the live stream but there's obviously a good chunk of you who would not have seen that so so basically these rock protrusions are just meant to be something coming from under the ground that have kind of bursted their way through the seabed and uh, yeah are protruding <laughs> out of the ground and then the bubbles we've got are kind of from like little air gaps letting in some oxygen and causing all of these bubbles and then the granite things over here are just boulders. I, I don't know where they came from, the sky maybe, but uh, they are just there to add an extra little detail. And yeah, I I'm super happy with how all of this has turned out. Also guys, if you see anything that looks at all similar just like that, a cobblestone block by itself, in the river down here please let me know because that means I've marked out a location and have forgotten to build one of these things here. Same goes for the granite but I think I should have them all built but yeah super super happy with this. Last episode I had a comment from one of my wonderful moderators Jan, Jan Catlady who suggested that I do a similar thing to what we've done over here with the water kind of creeping in through into the marketplace but in some of these individual divots to make puddles of sorts so we're not going to fill all of these up but maybe if we just do a couple that have uh, perhaps accumulated some more rainfall than others so say this one under here wouldn't have because it's got a block above it but this one right here pretty out in the open maybe we can fill these three in as well and I think that's going to have a pretty cool effect. As you can see, this gives a pretty cool effect. So thank you, Jam, for that suggestion. I love how this turned out. I haven't gone too crazy adding them all in. I've maybe done about 10 or so, as well as a couple on the sides. But yeah, this looks pretty neat, I must say. And there were also a couple of comments uh, or suggestions, I should say, in regards to the market stalls, where basically you guys were saying they maybe looked a little too rigid and uniform and not really like a piece of cloth draped over the actual stool itself. And gotta agree with you there. But uh, this is Minecraft and there are certain limitations. I 
do kind of want to do what you guys are saying and make them look a bit more realistic and free flowing. The only trouble is it's going to be pretty tricky to do that just because it might change up the entire like order of the marketplace here, which is kind of what we have this house and or meeting hall and the bridge centered around. So for the time being, I'm going to leave them as they are. Hope it kind of grows on us a little bit as the episodes go on. But in the future, if we still don't like it, we can always change it up to something else. I don't know if my eyes are deceiving me or if this cursor in the center of our screen isn't centralized with the pause menu. Is it just me or is it like a, a single pixel, one or two pixels slightly to the left? Like this is a bigger gap than this one. I don't know if that's just me seeing it, but uh, if it is the case, then I'm bringing you guys down with me and you can suffer that <laughs> the same way I'm going to every time I enter the pause menu. But uh, it, maybe it could be central, I don't know, you guys probably can see that better than I can, but um, yeah, now what I want to do is build a few more boats along our river here, because it's really missing them, and that's what this episode's really going to be about. I've got probably five boat designs that I want to include in today's episode, so we're not going to do them all at once, and instead to begin with here, we are going to do the two that are coming from other communities. Squid? <laughs> Squid flying? Okay, fair enough. Uh, that are coming from other communities elsewhere in the world. So I've got a jungle boat and a tiger boat that we're going to build now. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up what you guys are probably all thinking. No, this boat would not fit under the bridge. It wouldn't by a long shot. The giant mast here is just a little bit in the way. I mean, what I could do and what I've actually been debating with is kind of modifying the bridge to allow the centre bit to look as though it could fold upwards a little bit like they have in uh, Holland and a couple other places in Europe, I think. I'm not too sure though exactly, but... um. Yeah, could do that, or we could just pretend they come and get the supplies and do a U-turn and... Oh, wait, hang on, they can't fit in either. <laughs> yeah, didn't really put too much thought into all of that whilst building this, but I spent far too long on the mast not to actually use this. I mean, it may not be the most complicated thing in the world, but... I spent a very long time trying to build this thing and I've actually just realized it's not quite done. It's meant to have something down here at the bottom. Two trap doors and two fences. Same again on the other side. If I can just <laughs> make my way up here, there's stuff everywhere getting in the way. But yeah, there we go. That looks a lot better, surprisingly, if we can actually get a better view from this on top of the meeting hall. Uh, maybe on top of the bridge would be a better viewpoint. But yeah, this is the jungle boat. How do you guys like it? Obviously, minus the mast and not actually being able to feasibly fit into the village itself, we'll just pretend these retract without actually doing anything with them, yeah? Or maybe the mast can go down or something like that, I don't know, we're gonna have to use our imagination, but yeah, this is the one from the jungle. Took me quite a while to design, but all in all, I think it came out looking okay, I'm still getting used to building boats. 
And then we've got this little thing over here, which is meant to be a very small version of an icebreaker. One of those big old ships from some sort of snowy location that has ice in the water that would need to then break through said ice, hence the name icebreaker, which is what this monstrosity is at the front, which looks really ugly until I tell you that is what its intended purpose is. Makes sense that way, and unfortunately, no metal blocks or anything come in the stair variant, so I've had to use stone. Got a little bit of cracked behind there, showing its wear and tear over time from all that ice breaking. But um, if you guys really don't like this thing at the front, we can always exchange it out for what we've done at the back and just have like a regular, uh, regular tiger boat, I guess. But uh, yeah, I, I know, by the way, also, it wouldn't actually gather together enough momentum nor power to break through the ice. But it turns out with this village, we're going to have to use our imagination a lot. It's not exactly the most realistic thing in the world. But uh, yeah, this is two of the boats and on board. We don't have any crates because they are coming to pick up all of their stuff to carry on back home. It's definitely not because I didn't have enough room on here for all of those other things. But yeah, those are the two boats I've done so far. We'll get the other three done later in the episode. But for right now, I want to add in the docks. Forgot to say, the icebreaker part of our icebreaker here was actually a suggestion from Anton. So thank you for the suggestion. Very good idea. Perhaps not very well executed by yours truly. But uh, yeah. That's where I got it from. Just want to give credit where credit is due. I say docks, but these are more loading areas as opposed to anything else. They're not exactly big enough to dock some of the boats and ships that are going to be coming through here. I mean, this one alone is going to take up like that entire area. So yeah, this is where all of the boats are going to be loaded. I'm thinking maybe we could add like individual docking areas around the rest of the river. Something a little bit like this just to house individual boats. Obviously, we'd strip that wood, but we can just do a single pillar there just every now and again beside them and maybe just put a small boat beside it but for right now I'm gonna leave it I think just because it's gonna look a bit weird if I just have several single blocks just dotted around the village so that's something we can maybe add once we start building up some more things elsewhere but uh let me go to sleep real quick and then I'll actually show you and explain a little bit about these things. They probably don't need a whole lot of explaining, but I've gone for a very rickety platform here using a bunch of spruce trap doors facing various locations and heights and everything to create this somewhat of a rustic feel. I don't know if that's exactly the right word I'm going for here, but I didn't want to have anything that was super organized and kind of have like sections shooting off into the river. One that's going to take up a lot of room and then it will look even more like the boats can actually come through our river here, but I also think I prefer this more unique look to it. I, I don't exactly know the right word to describe it, but I think they look pretty good. And uh, yeah, we've obviously got some crates and barrels here ready to be unloaded or loaded on and off the boats. And then I've got one on each side of our village here. So the one on, if I can start flying back down, this one is obviously for all of the residents in the village. The fishermen that are coming back, they can put all of their barrels and crates and dock up over here. And then the visitors coming to see this side of the village can come to this area right here. So yeah, maybe we could even add some more in later, possibly have another Another one on the other side of the market but I think for right now that's quite good and also I know the transition here is uh, pretty ugly right now but once we've got some more stuff built up I'll do some sort of a uh, thing like we've done over here with all of the stone and it'll make it hopefully a little bit smoother than what it is right now. A very small detail I forgot to add in to our ships was the rudder around the back so now I've got those in and we can actually steer the boats <laughs> if they were to be moving. It's now boat time again, so I'm going to do two more now. One of them is pretty simple and straightforward. The other one is a little bit different and somewhat of a challenge to myself. So I'm going to get these two built and hopefully, well, one of them you'll be fine with, but the other one, well, maybe it's best if I just show you the outcome. With this village project, I am trying to challenge myself to build in ways that I wouldn't usually. So take the diagonal building, for example, behind us with our entranceway, and also boats. I'm not awfully confident in building either of those two things, but this is what happens if I combine the two. Now, I'm showing you it from this angle to begin with here because I honestly think that this is the way it looks best from. Maybe not <laughs> too good of a thing because that loading area is kind of like blocking most of it. So maybe let's go on top of the bridge and get a different viewpoint. 
It can look really good depending on where you're actually looking at it from. With diagonal building, you kind of have to view it in an entirely different way. I mean, it's so opposed to just regular building in Minecraft. You have to have like a whole different lookout on it, but there's some angles where it looks really bad. Like I, I hate the, the head on look here. It just looks strange, but I think from most of the other directions looks pretty good. I don't know. I, I think I've done a good job. I can't really tell, but uh, I did spend quite a long while on this trying to get it to look like, well, look like a boat and not just like a strange culmination of blocks placed together. And uh, this one is actually in the process of being loaded with all of the crates and barrels here. So I'm imagining this is one of the fishermen's boats. As you can see, they're on the uh, this side of the village where all of our residents will be staying. So maybe they're loading up their crates to go on a trip of fishing. Obviously, won't be able to fit out of the entranceway but we're trying to ignore that so uh yeah diagonal boat how do you guys think i did with this one good job or bad job or it looks weird stop building diagonally <laughs> i don't know over here just beyond the main entranceway is where i've built the other boat which is a little bit of a smaller design not quite as complicated as our diagonal one over there but i think it turned out to be pretty good which once again is another one of the boats that belong to the villagers living in this village i've just realized it's very close to the water here but i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i mean it's still poking above by two pixels so it, it's not quite sinking just yet it's almost a little bit like a raft but with some additions to the side here but yeah just a simple little boat on their way to do some fishing for the day before they return back home. And I think maybe this one could potentially fit under the entranceway and the bridge. Maybe it would just shear the top off a little bit. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful view of our village. Everything just looks so calm and peaceful. There's not one thing here that looks slightly unusual. Not, not one thing at all. For the fifth and final boat of today's episode, I'm going to build it on camera here because it's super tiny. As you can see, this is the main structure to it. So we need three slabs in the water at the top level here with two upside down stairs either side. And then at the front of the boat, we can have our barrel here with the uh, lantern at the front. And then around the back, we can have a single fence post like that. And then here we can have one, two, three bring those out by two more either side. This one is actually going to fit under the bridge, woohoo, <laughs> for the first time ever. And then we can add in our sail here like this. I think I'm doing this the right way around, pretty sure. Uh, and then we need to add in our trap doors. So we'll do two here on the barrel and then whoops, not like that. We will break that top one. I just smashed something, some kelp, I think. Uh, place a stone block here to add in some temporary ones. And then we can place our signs down one there a spruce one doesn't really matter though i suppose and then we're gonna have two oak either side and now we can actually place in a proper boat so we're going to be able to sit in this thing which it should be pretty cool we need to try and place it fairly centrally i think that should be good we can go ahead and break that one now flip up the trap doors and let's just give it a test can we can we swim or can we swim can we ride the boat we can what happens if you get out do i knock it about all over the place no, very nice. Okay, so yeah, that is just a very, let me get to a place where I'm not swimming, uh, a very nice little boat design, and I wish, I really wish I could say this was mine, uh, but it's not. I see this all the time on Pinterest and Reddit and Instagram, and I have no idea who originally came up with it, so I can't really give credit there, unfortunately, but um, I've also realized the boat is, I need to move it forward a little bit. There we go, I think that's better. Um, yeah, I don't know who originally came up with this, but it's super adorable and I, I just couldn't not build it. I usually try and keep everything to my own design unless it's some sort of redstone machine, but for something as simple and as adorable as this, I mean, I, I think it's okay to make an exception here. Unfortunately, guys, we are going to start wrapping up today's episode now. And although it may not look like we've got a whole lot done today, I can assure you a great amount of time has gone into today's episode, mainly just in a creative world trying to come up with these boat designs. I mean, take the jungle boat, for example, here. This finished product is probably the fifth, sixth, maybe even seventh, I kind of lost count, iteration of its kind. I just spent ages trying to get a general structure to the boat that I was happy with, which was what I was kind of struggling with most with boat building. And it's been really fun, honestly, kind of testing myself 
something I'm not all that confident with doing, which I'd really recommend you guys trying out. So say there's something in this game that you've never tried before and you're scared to do it because you, you don't know how to do it. You've never tried it. Just give it a go. You know, practice makes perfect. It's, it's a saying for a reason. But have you guys got a favorite boat that we built today? I honestly think, unfortunately, my favorite one is the tiny one down there under the bridge, which isn't even my own one. I do quite like the diagonal one, but I, I, I think my favorite overall is this jungle boat here. So yeah, you guys can let me know your favorite one that we built today, or maybe even the first one we built over there. Uh, you can let me know that in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what you guys say about that. Real quick before we go, I just wanted to come back over to our main area here. I feel like it's been forever since we've been here, but it's only been like two episodes. Uh, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the bees. So I don't think we've had many more escapees. Escape bees? Escape bees? Kind of works. <laughs> um, Any more just like flying off into the ocean here. So most of them seem to be staying put, which is really nice. Super cool to see them flying in and out of our bee house here, which is mainly because I think if I just go up here and show you, we've got all of these flowers, which have been here for quite some time. But uh, yeah, these are helping them to stay put. And poor Asha here has been knocked off of her stool from all of them <laughs> colliding with her. But uh, yeah, she's doing a great job of fending off the creepers, aren't you? There we go. <laughs> Me out in the end. Anyway, guys, that is going to be where we end off today's episode. I'm sat here in my boat having a great time and ooh, nice and close. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the episode and you liked all the boats that we did. As per usual, next episode, we're going to be doing some more stuff over here in the village. Not too sure what exactly, but it should be a fun one nonetheless. So thank you guys ever so much for watching this episode. I really hope you did enjoy it and I will see you next time. Bye for now.